Today we are going to take a look at the Echo Party 2019 exploitation challenge from Bluefrost Security that requires you to first of all bypass the SLR stack protection by somehow leaking the base address of a module. To get started we first of all simply take a look at the binary and check out how we can interact with it. To do that we start Windybug and load the Echo 2019 binary into it. And from here we can resume the execution flow. What we can do now is start the task manager and switch to details for that process, which shows that the process ID is 4380. Now we can use the netstat command and pipe its output into the find string command with the process ID, which shows that the echo2019 binary is listening on port 54321. In my article on guided hacking, I used Jitra for the static analysis part of the reverse engineering. Here I'm using IDA3 version 8.2. Both of them have a decompiler for 64-bit binaries, so just use whatever software you're more comfortable with. From here on, we can take several approaches to get started. We could just send data to the binary by connecting to that virtual machine, to that port. That would be one way. What we are going to do is go to the Functions tab in IDA, right-clicking and using Quick Filter to look for the Receive function. From here we can use Control x to make a cross-reference search to Receive, and we can see that there are two calls made in the same function. From here, since we have a 64-bit binary, we can click F5 and then confirm that with OK to use the Hexray Cloud Decompiler and obtain pseudo C++ code. Taking a look at the pseudo code shows that we have our first call to receive and the data received will be written to the buff variable, 16 bytes. And the amount of bytes received, so this is the return value of the receive function, will be stored in the variable v5. Afterwards we print some text to the console and then we have our very first comparison. So we compare v5, the amount of bytes received, with 16. What this means is that if the header has a length of 16 bytes, we pass this check, otherwise we'll fail and quick exit this function. If we pass this check, so if our header is indeed 16 bytes long, we enter the second check. What we do here is compare our buffer, so our header, with this static hexadecimal value. We can take a note of this value because it's going to be the one we have to send as our header later on. And afterwards we check if v11, an unknown variable, is smaller than or equal to 512. And we can see that v11 is used in the receive function later on, so this might be a boundary check that didn't quite work because they implemented it in a wrong way. So far that's just an assumption, but we can take a note that we are supposed to send a message with a length of max 512 bytes. Afterwards we once again print something to the console, so the amount of bytes received for the message, and then we enter yet another check. So v5 once again contains the number of bytes received by the receive function, and we check if v5 modulo 8 is not equal to 0. So if it is equal to 0 we pass this check. If it's unequal, we print error, invalid size alignment, and return from the connection handler function. This means that the amount of bytes we send as our message to the binary must be aligned by 8 bytes, or in other words, must be dividable by 8. If our message, or our buffer, that we send to echo2019 is indeed aligned by 8 bytes, we enter this else block right here. And we can see that we once again print something to the console, we call a local function and store its return value in the buffer array. And then we get a process handle using get current process, call write process memory using the process handle, base address, the buffer, and we write eight bytes to that base address. Afterwards, it seems like we make a call to that base address, which means that the data written to that address by write process memory will then get executed or interpreted as CPU instructions. The return value is stored in the v3 variable, which will then get sent back to us using the windsock send function. And finally, our connection handler returns. Down here, we can see some more errors like size is too big, invalid cookie or invalid header, 
but those are obviously paths that we don't want to take. So we can note that we have our static header, we have our static header length that we have to set, and our buffer must be aligned by 8 bytes. If we take a look at the length of this hex value, we see that it's just 7 bytes, which means that one possible way would be to append a string terminator, so a null byte to it, if it's interpreted as a string, which would make sense because we are using the receive function. And then we still have an additional 8 bytes, because so far we just got 8 bytes, but the very first check right here checks if the header has a length of 16 bytes. So this means that we probably have to add another 8 bytes as a filler. To get started with our exploit development and with the dynamic analysis, we switch back to the graph view and scroll down or move down to this basic block right here, which contains the call to get current process, write process memory, and the indirect call right here using the base address.